Hello, hello. Um, welcome back again. Excited to read with you today. So you're never going to believe it. When I woke up this morning, it was like my hair knew that I was going to read Bedhead to you. I could hardly get a brush through my hair today, so this is the way it is, and I hope you don't mind. It's really quite fitting for this story, which is called Bedhead. How many of you wake up sometimes in the morning and it's like your hair has a mind of its own? Well, you're about to read a story about an unfortunate case of Bedhead, written by Margie Palatini, illustrated by Jack E. Davis. Shuffle, slump, shuffle, slump, shuffle, slump, slumped, bleary-eyed Oliver out of bed, down the hall, and into the bathroom. He yawned, he yanked, splashed some water, swished some mouthwash, gave his front teeth a passable brushing, and then, in a gunkless corner of the soapy silver soap dish, in a fogless smidgen of his father's foggy shaving mirror, right there on the hot water faucet, for heaven's sake, he saw it. It was big. It was bad. It was bad head. Oliver's hair was out of control way out of control. There was hair going this way, hair going that way, hair going up, down, around and around. And there was one teeny tiny clump of hair way at the back of his head that looked just like a cat's coughed up fur ball. <laughs> Even the cat's afraid. Did you see him? Oh, Oliver's scream shook. It rattled. It rolled all the way down the stairs and into the kitchen where Fruit Loops went flying. Milk was spilled, spit and sputtered, and two toast toasties did triple backflips onto the breakfast table. Oliver? Oliver? Oliver! shouted Mom, Dad, and Emily as they ran up the stairs and headed for the bathroom door. Are you noticing some pretty good word choice that this author uses? One of my favorite things about this book, the words that the author uses. She does a great thing with the different descriptions that she uses, the sound words. Keep your eye out and listen closely for some of that word choice. Purple wow words, if you will. Mom leaned close to the door. Closer, closer. That's right, even closer. Is everything all right, Oliver? She whispered in her calmest calm mom voice. Come now, dear, open the door, let us in. No sound from Oliver, not a whimper, not a peep. Please, said mom. Pretty please, pretty, pretty, pretty please. The doorknob slowly turned. Mom smiled at dad. She gave a wink to Emily. There you go, she said, taking a step into the bathroom. Nothing can be that. Bad? Wrong. It was that bad. Yes, sir. No doubt about it, said dad, surveying the hairy situation from stink side. Oliver, my boy, you're having one. Bad hair day. Major, said Mom. Total, agreed Emily. Maybe if we just push it this way, Mom said, giving it a try. Boing, I've been there, done that, moaned Oliver. Perhaps if we just pull it that way, said Dad. Boing. Been there, done that, groaned Oliver. I could curl it, offered Emily, ready to roll. Oliver stared a steely stare at his sister. I don't think so. 
Oh, then we'll just wet it, said Mom. Yes, yes, let's just wet it, they all agreed. So they watered Oliver. They splished him and splashed him, gave him a good soaking dunk. Oh, they said, sighing a confident job well done sigh. Oliver's bed head was now one dripping wet head. And then, It dried. Hair started going this way. Hair started going that way. It went up, down, around, and around. And there was now a bigger clump of hair way in the back of his head that looked just like a cat's coughed up fur ball. Ah! Poor Oliver. I say we spray, shouted Dad, taking aim with a squirt. Yes, spray, spray, cried out Mom and Emily. So spray it already, sputtered Oliver. So they spritzed him and sprayed him and they gooped, glopped, and moosed him. And even hair pinned him flat in five places for good measure. Ah, <sighs> they said, sighing a confident job well done sigh. Oliver's bedhead was now one slick gel head. And then... Pins went flying. Boing, 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 ding, ding, boing, 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 boing. Hair started going this way. Hair started going that way. Then up and down, around and around. And there was now an even bigger clump of hair way at the back of his head that looked just like a cat's <coughs> coughed up fur ball. Oliver wondered, maybe if I just sort of, kind of, you know, brushed it a bit. No, no, the three shouted, seeing the boy with bristles poised. Whatever you do, no, no, no brush. Why do you think they don't want him to use a brush? Think it might get stuck? Too late. Oh yes, that brush got stuck. Not stuck in the hair going this way or that. Mm -mm. Not stuck in the hair going up and down. Not even stuck in the hair going around and around, but stuck, yes, very, very, very stuck in the clump way at the back of his head that looked just like a cat's coughed up fur ball. Mom gave it a yank, yow! Dad gave it a pull, ow, ouch! And Emily gave it one good long tug, yike! Well, said Mom, without a bit of a doubt, that brush is stuck all right. Definitely stuck, decided Dad. A done deal, declared Emily. And then just when they were all about to give up hope, Oliver saw the answer right there on the wall. <gasps> That's it, he pointed. The hat, the hat, go get the hat. So without one more thought of a spritz, spray, or dunk, they all, all helped Oliver squish, smoosh, and cram every bit of bedhead, stuck brush and all into his faithful old battered but true blue baseball cap. Well, almost, eh, good enough. And with a kiss and a wave, Oliver headed off to school. Everything was fine, everything was dandy. And then... Mary Margaret, who sat in the third row, four seats down, one desk across from Oliver and Mrs. O's class at Biddlemeyer Elementary, looked over to him and said, you can't wear that. Oliver looked over to Mary Margaret, can't do. Cannot. And just why not? demanded Oliver, holding tightly onto his hat. Mary Margaret grinned. Because it's picture day. P -p picture day? stuttered Oliver. Picture day! sang out Mrs. Oppenheimer, standing in front of the class. Everyone line up for class picture. Back straight, faces front, smiles wide, and and hats off. Uh-oh, said Oliver. Hats off. We're waiting, Oliver, said Mrs. O, as everyone took their places. We're waiting, Oliver, said Mary Margaret. We're waiting, Oliver, said everyone else. Hey, kid, 
said the man behind the camera. Yeah, you with the lumpy looking head. Off with the hat. Oliver hemmed, he hawed. <sighs> but he knew, he had it. He had to do it. He lifted the brim and slowly took off his faithful old battered but true blue baseball cap. He held his breath, he closed his eyes, then he waited. He waited some more. Nothing, zero, zilch, nada. He opened his eyes and looked up. There was no hair going this way or that way. No hair going up, no hair going down, not even around and around. And nobody could see the brush stuck in the clump of hair way in the back of his head that looked like a cat's coughed up fur ball. <sighs> Said Oliver, sighing a confident job well done sigh. Ready everyone? Sang out Mrs. O. Big smiles and say cheese on the count of three. One, she said. Two, she said. And then, then, then. Boing, 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 bing, bing, boing, 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 boing. Hair started going this way, hair started going that way, hair started going up and down, around and around. And the brush that was stuck in the clump of hair way at the back of his head that looked just like a cat's <coughs> coughed up fur ball let loose. And boing, Mary Margaret on the top of her head and boomeranged right into Mrs. O's nose. Three! said the boy to Mrs. O, just as she and everyone else at Biddlemeyer Elementary got a look at Oliver and his bed head. Ah, yes! Click. Got it, said the photographer. Mrs. Oppenheimer's class. Front row, Daniel, Jeffrey, Sarah, Jessica, Michael. Mrs. O. Middle row, Catherine, Ben, Tim, Mary Margaret, Emma, back row, Oliver, Robert, Allison, Andrew, Aaron, Stephen, Oliver, and of course, Oliver's bedhead. <laughs> the end. Well, I sure hope that your days at bedhead don't turn out just like Mr. Oliver, Oliver's, poor thing. He had quite the day. Whew. Well, next time we meet, you're in for a treat. I'm gonna read a new story I'm pretty sure none of you have ever heard before called Martina and the Beautiful Cockroach. That's right, a beautiful cockroach. If you're not sure what a cockroach is, I really encourage you to uh, find a picture of this lovely insect somewhere on the internet, maybe with mom and dad's help or grandma and grandpa's help. And uh, if you don't think they're beautiful, well then, just you wait until we read this story together. All right, until next time. I have to show you something. I just was reminded when Bridget came out from her quiet time. Somebody that's pretty well known around these parts for bedhead, Bridget. Wait till you see this picture. I think you're gonna like it.